post it in the comments. What did you think was in the box? Now, if I was some big time YouTuber, maybe I would have, you know, been opening the box to find some fancy new camera to add to my 500 other cameras, or maybe, you know, somebody would have actually shipped me a free camera. That would be pretty cool. I'm not opposed to those things, but I ordered this for myself. Three whole boxes of 60 sachets each of red rose tea. This tea has been out of stock nationwide for over a year, and finally some appeared on Amazon and I had to get. Now, just like A&W, Red Rose in Canada is not the same thing as Red Rose in the United States. This tea is the best breakfast tea I have ever had. It is amazing. It's my favorite. So without further ado, let's go make some tea. Fahrenheit, three to five minutes, and that makes your cup of tea. What does a tea maker know about making tea anyway? And one quick clarification about boiling the water with the tea in it. I would only ever do that with a cast iron tea kettle. I used to hate green tea because I would always burn it no matter what I did. I have yet to burn green tea in a cast iron kettle and I boil the water with the green tea in it and I just leave it in there. The cast iron just has some secret thing that it does. What I'm trying to say is I'm not crazy. It actually works. You should try it sometime. It's so good. just smells so good. I'm not even joking. It's so good. All right, now that the tea's boiled, I wanted to talk to you about creating cinematic footage on old cameras. For example, this camera, the Nikon D7000, 10 years old. Can you really use this camera professionally? The Nikon D7000 is a 2012 crop frame camera. It has a maximum native ISO of 6400, a maximum frame rate of 30 frames a second, 20 minutes recording limit. In live view recording video, you cannot change the aperture. There is no clean output through HDMI. Terrible, terrible live view autofocusing and no live view assisting of any kind. Some tea. First thing I always tell someone who's looking at buying a new camera and trying to figure out what camera system to buy into is what are the people around you using? There's just something valuable about having people you know who live close by who use the same gear you do. So when we originally bought this camera, it was because we were going to make a movie and we needed a camera. And so I went on eBay and I found a refurbished Nikon because that saved me a little bit in price. Actually, pro tip, refurbished cameras are great. The thing about a refurbished camera is that you actually have higher quality control because somebody has individually looked at all the parts of this camera to make sure everything's working, as opposed to an assembly line brand new unit where they're just checking every 10, every 20 to make sure things are still coming off the line properly. I know this like the back of my hand now, right? It's I've just got so used to it. Um, you can see the back there. The thing is, if you know how to use these cameras, any camera, any camera, any DSLR is going to be able to give you cinematic images because the reality is a cinematic image is more than a color grade. It's more than a lens. It's understanding how to tell a story in the frame and how to frame things, how and why and when to use movement. The camera is actually a very minor part of that. What the camera does is it makes your life easier or more difficult when it comes to telling your story. So when I bought these cameras, they were a huge improvement in how easy it was to tell a story. And I was used to that and I was content with that. And I have learned how to push them. You know, I've learned how to put a flat profile in there, learned how to really get the most out of them. But the camera itself is not what makes something cinematic. You can get cinematic footage off of an iPhone even an old iPhone, a DSLR is going to be a lot easier 
and make your life a lot easier for those kinds of things. Different cameras are going to provide different benefits on how easy it is to do what you want it to do. And they're going to have different strengths and different weaknesses. Cinema cameras are meant to be used by a crew, and on a feature film set, they actually offer some significant advantages in helping a movie crew make the movie, get the image they want easily and faster than, say, a DSLR. A DSLR is going to be much quicker and much faster, much easier to get cinematic images for a small crew or for somebody who's run and gun. If you want to be like undercover, then you can't beat a phone or a GoPro. Every camera is just a tool to help you get the image you want to tell the story you need to tell. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there that ask the question, can I make an old 10 year old, you know, that's what this is, 10 year old camera look cinematic. Can I make a movie with that? Yes. Yes, you can. I've made three. You might argue with me on whether they're the most cinematic looking movies out there. That's not the point. There are DPs out there who could push this camera much further than I could. But can it do it? Yes, it's just a tool. Would a new camera, you know, a more expensive camera, be a better tool for the job? Possibly, very possibly. It might make my life easier. Do I need it? Not necessarily. What I've found is that limitations often stoke learning and kindle the fire of creativity. And so whatever camera you have, whatever camera you can have access to, even if all you can afford is a 10 year old DSLR, that is an amazing tool. That is an amazing storytelling tool that people 15 years ago would have just loved to have and couldn't get a hold of. And yet they still told amazing stories made amazing imagery, and made the tools they had work. And here you are with access to something five years newer than they had with features they only dreamed about at a price they couldn't even imagine paying for a tool that did half as much as what you're using. Here's the thing though. I used a thousand dollar DSLR from when it was new until it was 10 years old. And the hard truth is that I fell into a poverty mindset. I believed I was too poor to access newer tools. And the reality was, yes, I didn't have the money in my bank account to buy something better, but there was a reason for that. And that poverty mindset held me back. It hurt my ability to be creative in the way that creativity was designed to be used by God. And that is to help other people, to be a blessing to others, not just to use it for myself. The reality is that real artists don't starve. They don't make art for themselves. They make art for others. They make the world a better place. And they help people achieve their dreams and their goals. Art is an incredibly powerful tool. Storytelling is an incredibly powerful tool to accomplish large ends and large goals and large feats. Real artists serve others and meet other people's needs in an incredible way that nobody else can. And that is valuable. And people pay money for that. So in my case, there was a number of things that held me down to a 10 year old piece of equipment. One was I didn't see the value in what I was creating. And so that meant I didn't charge what I could have, but it also meant I didn't offer what I could have. I didn't provide the potential value that I could have either. There were opportunities that I said, I can't do that. I don't have the resources. I don't have the skill. I've just got a 10 year old DSLR. And the other is that sometimes I was selfish and I just focused on what I wanted to do and what I liked. And the reality was, in many cases, that wasn't valuable to anybody else, or wasn't as valuable as it could have been if I was actually thinking about others first. So if your aim is to be a professional film person, whether that's in feature films, or doing commercial work, or weddings, or any other client work, what have you, YouTube, if you want to be pro, you need to aim higher. Don't settle. What I said before still stands. 
It's just a piece of equipment. Don't buy things before you can pay for them, but aim higher. Aim to offer more value. If you don't have the money for the camera you want right now, buy what you can, and then look at how can you create so much value that buying that better camera in a year from now, it won't even be a question. That'll be easy, it'll be, it'll be change. Learn to serve people, learn to be valuable and give people what they want and what they need and they'll pay you for that. And then you'll be able to buy all the equipment you need. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave you with that. Aim higher. Aim higher, learn to serve. How can you use what you have, the camera you have, the equipment you have, to make the world a better place, to serve others, and to meet real needs. Because in that 10-year-old camera that you have on your desk and you're seeking to justify by watching a video like this, you have the potential to change people's lives. There's a saying that any advice that you give is really just talking to a previous version of yourself. And so I'm just talking to myself here you're welcome to listen in. Who knows, maybe in not too much time, I'll be using a camera that's not 10 years old. Until next time. <laughs>